stress relief program that I've designed for teachers is called Present Teacher. And the reasoning for that name is, um, is because I believe that when teachers are present, not only physically, because so many teachers leave the profession, um, so present teacher means like a literal presence in the classroom, because so many teachers, not only do they leave, they take a lot of sick days, a lot of like mental health days, a lot of like um, physical pain type of days where they, they need to be gone. Um, and some of that is due obviously to just, just the normal wear and tear on the body, but a lot of it's actually due to stress. Um, and unchecked stress that teachers just deal with every day, day in and day out. So present teacher means just having physical present teachers in the classroom, but it also means a mentally and emotionally present as well. So we know that you know when we're stressed out and when we're overwhelmed and when we're anxious, um, which often accompanies the teaching profession because there's always way more demands on you than one can physically cope with. Um, that's one of the biggest stressors for teachers, but another big stressor for teachers is the emotional stress. Um, primary to being a teacher is the relationship you have with children. And so when you're in a room with 30 children, um, some who have lots of trauma or stress in their own lives, um, teachers tend to take on their emotions and then not be able to regulate their own reactions, right? Their own strong like reactions to kids, maybe misbehavior or seeking for attention. And so when teachers have these emotional, negative emotional responses in the classroom, then they start to feel bad about themselves. And so present teacher is about using, um, and I use mindfulness, mindfulness meditation as the primary tool um, to teach teachers how to kind of cope with the emotional demands of teaching, to cope with their own emotional reactions to the stress. Um, it is a stress, quote unquote, stress reduction program, but it's really about actually learning how to, to leverage the stress, to actually grow from it, because being stressed is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We grow from stress, like we want stress, we need stress. But in order for stress to cause us to grow and thrive, um, we need to know how to cope with it and find meaning in it. And so really the program I've designed for teachers um, uses mindfulness and meditation and yoga um, and lots of what we call body awareness things where teachers learn how to connect with their body um, and how to be patient with themselves and kind of process strong emotions without reacting to them or their own reactions to them. Um, they learn how to center themselves more quickly. And so when we as teachers, you know, this is not about stopping emotions. The program is not about stopping stress because none of that's possible. You just learn how to kind of allow stress to be in your life, but not let it have as big of an impact as maybe it might have before if you're not aware. So that's a little bit about um, Present Teacher. I remember there's lots of times where I see the impact um, of the program, but one time in particular, which was very recent, um, I'm doing this program right now at an elementary school um, in a Northwest suburb with a group of teachers and um, we're about in the fifth month of it. It's, we're doing it all year long. And I had the teachers write about a moment when they felt resilient, because really that's what this is about. Resilience is the ability to bounce back up after you've been knocked down, right? Because again, we're not trying to stop the stress. We're just trying to like grow from it and get stronger from it. And I listened to this one story of a teacher who shared out that, and she was pretty emotional about it, was um, a moment when she was teaching and there were a couple of her special ed students who tend to trigger her, their behaviors trigger her, and she says she gets very angry and agitated and upset and then it impacts kind of the classroom culture and the climate. She said in that moment when she, when she was starting to notice her emotions getting the best of her, she paused. So first of all, I can tell that it's working because she noticed her own emotions. A lot of times we don't even catch our own emotions. You think we would because they're really strong, but we don't. But she said, I noticed my own emotions and I stopped and I took, I stopped and I took, you know, three deep breaths, which again is another really simple thing, but, but something we don't do. And then she said, then she shifted her perspective and thought, you know, they're not hurting anybody. Everybody's still learning. Maybe this is my problem and I just kind of need to let it go. We know from the research that teachers who are burnt out and stressed out, the stress manifests in three ways. And one of the ways 
um, one of the ways it manifests is they feel um, like they're not effective as teachers and that's just a bad feeling. It doesn't feel good to show up at work and not feel you're effective because if you feel you're ineffective, you actually do a less effective job. Like beliefs are very powerful. Um, another manifestation of stress, how it comes out in a classroom, is um, again, teachers feel this, they, they start to depersonalize. Um, from their students and so that's again kind of comes back to that reference I have for kids that when teachers are stressed they start to see everybody else and other people as the problem again which is just it's nothing personal it's just a way that the mind copes and so depersonalization is when you start to see you start to disconnect from your students you start to see them as problematic you start to blame them for why you feel the way you do um, and so it's really why I think stress reduction is so essential is because teachers are doing amazing things every day. They're just not able to see it because they're so stuck in the negativity which stress can bring on. So I think it's important for teachers to be able to catch themselves and doing really good things and, and reflect on that because then that grows. But then again, that other just res that respect for children and just um, you're, we are here to serve them. And so part of serving them requires that we take care of our own, like I call it like psychological housekeeping. Like we can, we can only take, we're the only people who can take care of our own mental and emotional health and well-being. And for some other professions that might not be as important as it is in a profession like teaching where you are striking up and need to strike up connective, trusting relationships with kids before, they're, before they'll open up to learning from you. Angel. There just needs to be attention placed on the support that we have to give teachers around their mental and emotional well-being. Right now there's a lot of professional development and rightly so on like techniques like what you do as a teacher like writing workshop and behavior management and all of that's incredibly important. But what isn't as privileged in current PD for teachers is again this self-identity work. Um, Parker Palmer often says we teach who we are and that means in order to be effect an effective teacher you need to be well and authentic and, and unique. Um, and so there should be, I believe, that there needs to be PD that gives teachers the space to keep kind of working with their own relationship with themselves because that relationship that they have with themselves and their capacity to control their stress and manage it and learn from it and, and transform and um, allows them to be more effective teachers. It's all connected. But currently right now the PD programs, um, there's a, an imbalance between them. And so yes, I believe programs similar to mine that really do some deep teacher identity work. I mean, it says stress reduction, but it's, it's deeply personal um, I call it personal development and not just professional development. Um, I think it's an essential component of what we need to support teachers with because then they feel, at least I've discovered when teachers get the type of PD I offer, they feel so seen and understood, just like the kids that you know they work with want to be seen and understood. And so it's very powerful. Mm -hmm.